Thank you. And go ahead, Councillor Hamilton. Thank you. Um, uh, this, is, this is a new process. Um, so, but by and large, I think I can support everything in here. Um, uh, I'll just note that uh, I'd be inclined to support Councillor Cartmel's uh, amendment on the bike plan, uh, just because I think it gives us the opportunity to clarify some of, I'm gonna say, the overarching policy considerations, um, uh, uh, but does not, um, passing of that does not preclude my support um, for the main motion. Um, uh, the, um, uh, as I mentioned with the amendment put forward on the LRT intruder technology, I think it's wise to keep projects on the table even if we're not um, going to fund them uh, this year. Um, capital can sometimes free up as projects complete. Um, and I would be inclined, uh, I thought about supporting Councillor Rice's um, amendment on district energy, uh, but I think uh, only taking it to checkpoint three affects our ability to uh, draw from different funding sources. So um, uh, one of my reasons behind supporting only to checkpoint three would be that it, the, the actual uh, profile um, suggests work in areas where there are motions subsequent to this that um, may or may not be passed. And so that would affect that profile, but I don't want to affect the uh, actual, um, uh, the funding source. So I think that could be something that's dealt with at a later time uh, through the adjustment process. The only, I, I mean, there's going to be a lot of, every time we talk about bike lanes, if I can gripe for a second, every time we talk about bike lanes, it becomes a rage bait um, in this city. And that is a failure on, like successive councils, frankly, for pitting this uh, about drivers versus bikers. Um, and it makes it so hard, frankly, to go into your neighborhoods and talk about what it really is about, which is optionality. It's about being able to wake up in the morning on a snowy day and not being absolutely dread struck that you have to uh, get in your car and sit in traffic for an hour and 45 minutes because the, the roads are, are a mess. Um, that you can take transit or, or on a beautiful summer morning, you can hop on your bike or fall morning or winter morning. I mean, a lid for every pot, right? Um, uh, you can get on a bike and you can ride through the river valley or you can ride to your job and you have that option. Optionality is, I think, fundamental in building a city that people want to live in and stay in and grow in. So that makes it easy for me to support um, uh, many of these things, but I, I just, I, I need to say once again, every time this conversation get, comes up, it gets framed in a way of winners and losers. And, and, uh, and I would encourage everyone when talking about this, frame it up um, on something that Albertans apparently hold very dear, which is the freedom to choose the way they interact with their city. Um, the way they interact with their environment. I think we will get more people on side with these kinds of investments if we can frame it up that way. So that's that's what I have to say about that. There is, I think, good economic um, capital investment in here. Um, I, I think the Chinatown piece will go a long way and is, I think, an opportunity to extend uh, a, a vote of confidence to a part of our city that feels, I think, that it's successively been undermined by decisions made around this table. Um, and uh, always lovely to see the corner store um, program uh, funded because that has had huge impacts in, in all corners of the city. Um, and of course, industrial, uh, the, the 137 Avenue industrial ramps piece, um, as we heard how important those investments are. So um, I will leave it there. Uh, I think I covered all the amendments uh, and the amendments to the amendments. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton.